It's time once again to slip into your camel, grab your bone, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery. Carbon Express. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Wind Scent Hunting Sense. Killer Food Plots. Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants. Cabela's. Spot Shooters. Limb Walker Turkey Calls. Antler Action. Family Tradition Tree Stands. And Twisted Mind Bow Strings. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on GoodTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal Podcast, everybody. Host Mike Adams sitting in the cabin with full daylight out still with Dan DeFall. Yes, our Spring Forward Show. Yeah. It's not daylight savings time because we lost an hour, so there's not, we're not saving nothing. <laughs> you didn't even get to go to bed early to make up your no, time. No, I was busy. You were busy. Slinging mud. Slinging mud. Yep, I was but doing we some were, drywall. That was in the evening, but during the day, we spent the night. I spent the night. Spent the last two days at Cabela's. Yes, yes, that we did. It was an exciting two days down there. Right? The turkey classic, as they say. So You know, and that's a nice one. It's fun. It is. You know, and it's really fun to have... Um, hey Tim, what's going on, man? See you on there. Yeah, Tim's on. Kevin's on. Kevin, I, did you did you happen to see what he's doing today? No, I did not. Okay, see. so uh, he came to the store yesterday. Yeah, to I talk, right. Yeah. So yep, see him at the store. And then today he was boiling sap down, making maple syrup. Oh, he... I think he should have reversed it. And did this maple syrup yesterday. And brought us a and sample. brought us a sample today. Yeah. Yeah, because they were giving food away at Cabela's. So we right. could have, you know, put it on whatever they were serving over there. So Exactly. Very nice. Very but nice. we had a good time at Cabela's. Um, uh, it's always good to see new hunters. It is. And we saw a lot of new hunters. New hunters and young hunters. Yes, we did. So, um, you know, it was, a, it was a good mix. Like you said, new, new hunters and seasoned hunters. We, we were given uh, seminars. Uh, some tips, some tricks, some tactics, and things talking yeah. about turkeys. And it was also good in the in the new beginner category of seeing young to older. Yeah, right on. The gentleman with his son. Mm-hmm. They were two years into it, but they really wanted to get more into it. Last right. year it was kind of a right a ragtag thing they said, and they wanted more info. Right. And, uh, one guy was going to be picking it up for the first time this year. So yeah, we had uh, you know, and, and a lot of younger kids as well. I mean, there was a. Uh, a good mix of uh, different, like you said, age groups, you know, from teenagers all the way down to, I don't know, what did you say we, our youngest one we had there at the seminar was? Five? Four? Five, yeah. Four or five years old? Four or yeah. five. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, Kevin Craven says we need to keep dreaming. <laughs> okay, Kevin, here's what we're going to do. Make a batch up. Danny's going to buy it. Bring, we'll bring it back to the cab and we'll sample it. How about that? I guess we'll have to do that. <laughs> Tim deep fried a turkey for them yesterday. Oh, yeah? That's what nice. he says. He should come up to Michigan deep fry us. That's right. Forget West Virginia, man. Come on up. Yeah. And man, Brent alive. Jackson, what'd he do? Oh, he, he's talking about the. Oh, he, he got, got his it. rifle. He got a jet slip in the same place. So we're just, oh, okay. right now, for the people that are on the podcast, we're, we're kind of chatting back and forth a little bit with some of the people that are on the live stream right, right now. Right, exactly. And you, you know, out on the podcast, it's good to listen to it. But if you're free on a Sunday night, seven o'clock, where you we're pretty much on time yep. every week here doing a live show, seven p.m. every Sunday night. You, uh, know, you can check us out. You know, some things happen on the show here you won't hear on the podcast, and some things we talk about on the podcast that you can't see unless you watch the live stream or pick it up on Wednesday when we po- repost it. So oh, right, and there's and sometimes we'll do some interviews. Yeah, that carry over. We carry over, and sometimes you won't hear the interview live. And sometimes we, yeah, we do interviews, we post them, and you'll hear them on the podcast, but you don't hear them here on the live stream. Right. So you need to catch both of them, really. You do. And tonight's going to be one of those nights because we're going to run a test a right here. A water test. Yeah, and water I'm glad, test. And I'm glad Tim is, is watching because he can watch us do the water test. All right. So do we want to put the pressure on him right now? <laughs> well, let's talk. Well, let's let's, let's or do you, wait on the test. Wait on test? We'll, yeah. we'll make Tim set a little while. Yeah. Okay. All right. We can uh, do that. Brent saw a nice five toms this afternoon with nice beards. That's something that we were hearing at Cabela's quite a bit was the fact that people were starting to see birds already. And, uh, you know, they were seeing the gobblers out doing their thing and, and getting ready for that breeding season. So you said you've seen some? No, my brother called, brother. called me and said that uh, he's seen them. Okay. I got <laughs> yesterday. Phone rings. Look down, I and mean, we're at the show, you know, they're in the store, and working, and it's my dad from Alabama, and I'm like, 
Hmm. I, yeah. I better, you know, well, you know, when your parents get a little older and you, you see the call. You never know, so you should pick it up. So I picked it up real quick. Hey, what's going on? Oh, I just want to let you know, just saw five big gobblers out in the field as I was driving around. And I'm like, oh, well, thanks. I appreciate you rubbing it in just a When's little bit. When's his hunting season start for turkey? Do you know? They start, hmm, I think, the 1st of April. Okay. Don't quote me on that, but I know it's before ours. Okay. It's usually a couple weeks before. And they can shoot multiple toms in the state of Alabama. Really? Yeah. I want to, don't quote me on this, but I think it's five. I think. Don't quote me on that. Wow. Quite a few. Guess so. They get, I guess they're covered up in birds. Yeah. Well, they do. They got a lot of birds down there. Wow. So, yeah, my dad's cousin's always whacking birds. So Really? Yeah. Shh. Yeah. They don't have any problem limiting out, so. You know, and that was one of the questions we had. When's our season? When's, yeah. you know, from, from when our season is to, you know. Every, what shells to use? Right, calls. what calls. Um, mm-hmm. We talked about this. Uh, the number one, yesterday's number one question, mm-hmm. I think, was that question was what shell, what to shell use? is a good shell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What should I be using? What do you guys use? Yeah, exactly. And I'm what? like, well, it depends on what gun I'm using. So we had to talk about patterning shotguns. Right, exactly. So, you know, today was a lot on calls. You know, what kind of calls do you guys use? What kind of calls do you run? So Calls and decoys. Yeah. Hey, hey, Tim, uh, just make sure you watch for a couple guys maybe from Michigan that might be sending some information your way uh, looking for some calls. We, we uh, put some people uh, on direction towards you. So Right. So hopefully they'll get a hold of you. And uh, we, we, we had them in our bag, and we showed them, and they really liked them. There. Absolutely. So, yep. uh, a couple of new hunters were looking at them. Um, but, yeah, it was Shell. And then today was call and decoy. Yeah. Yeah. De- a lot of decoy placement. How do you run with decoys? Do you use decoys? Do you use one, a, yeah. a, a Tom decoy with a fan or, or don't you? Or Yeah. You know, and it's just, it's all personal preference. And, you know, like we talked, there, it was about half and half, whether it was public land or private land. Um, you know, talked about setups that can get you in trouble on public land with other hunters running and gunning. So, right. Exactly. That's. So it was, yeah, it was good. It was just a good all around turkey talking weekend. Yeah, it was. It was, it was good. To, and, and it was also good to have that, uh, matter of fact, calling contest. We while had. we're, uh, while we're here, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll show you a couple pictures from the event this weekend. Right. We got to meet the new event coordinate, event specialist, coordinator is specialist. Event coordinator. Yeah. That, yeah. Per. Yep. Emily Darling. Yep. New there to the uh, Chesterfield store there. And, yeah, she just started yeah, Monday. Right. Yeah, I can't can't get any newer than that. Just about so started started Monday and the first weekend she's got a big event with a bunch of seminars. Yeah. Right. So and it, it had Mike and Danny in the store. <laughs> yeah, and then you had us to the store, right? <laughs> to add to the mess. Yeah. So you yeah. know it was, uh, but it was fun. We had a good time. It, uh, meeting her. Uh, it was it was fun. Also meeting her, she got a new job, but she also worked at Saginaw. Right, yeah, she worked at the she, Saginaw. She store. worked at the the front desk at Saginaw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that way, you know, we, she remembered us. So mm-hmm. it was uh, good to get her going, and and, and she say, had a beautiful setup for us. Um, yeah, middle of the store, we got our table, all the uh, turkey stuff right around us. Yep, and you could you could see uh, the photo. Um, we're showing on the live stream that, uh, yeah, we had a full class. We did, yeah. You know, well, we the first seminar we did, we, actually, we, we gave a couple extras. Yeah, we gave three seminars uh, yesterday and one today. Uh, the first seminar yesterday was how to mount your turkey fan, mm-hmm. and we had one, mm-hmm. uh, so we helped him out. Right. And then we had the 1 o'clock youth turkey calling contest. And that's where and, you see us there. in and uh, tips and tricks. Yeah, and here's, here's a couple of the kids. Actually, four of them there playing with calls and, and trying them out. And Th- this was fun because uh, in this picture you see that we've got um, two families. Uh, each had two boys, and they each had a call. And it was just a matter of, you know, one was trying to play better than the other. Uh, but it was it was a good time. to. And they also got to take home a call. Yeah, they got a call given to them. Yep, so they were given a free flex tone call from Cabela's. Yep. So that way they could mess with the call when they get home and sit in front of the TV and drive mom and dad crazy. Well, we had to put make a stipulation. It was like, kids, you can have these calls and you can take them home with you, but you cannot play them in the car on the way home. We didn't want to see any any of these calls laying on the side of I-94 on, <laughs> when we left for the right. day. Right, you, know? you know, and that was the thing. And and they also, we had a little bit of a contest. And, had a uh, calling contest. Five of them 
walked away with, besides a call, they mm-hmm. walked away with a, a $10 gift card from Cabela's. Yeah, that's right. So, And actually, it worked out really good because actually uh, all the families ended up getting a $10 gift card. Okay. Year. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it was. It that's was. Right. That's, that's kind of how we... Uh, how it worked out. How it worked out, and it worked out good. So that was the one thing that um, you always see, and you just... You want them to have a good experience. Yep, you want to be successful and then give them a little something extra to take home with them. That's always an added bonus as well. So Right, so that was fun. And uh, it, Actually, we got a picture here of, of another caller and her dad. This is Adam Kemmer, and actually, we know him. Yes! He is from a group that we uh, run around with called Michigan Deer Hunters, Let Them Go, Let Them Grow. Uh, you've heard us talk about them many times on the show here, but Adam and his wife, I think they came... Did he have, yeah, he had his wife with him. Mm -hmm. They came down, brought their daughter, and their daughter's name is, I got it right here in front of me somewhere. Laney? Laney, that's right. Yep, and Laney won a $10 gift card. Right, she did, and right there we got a picture of her holding her gift card and her free call. Yeah, absolutely. So So, it was a good time. It was a great time. And the thing that, that really got me was the kids... They they all could play the call by the time they were done. Right. Everybody exactly. had it down. And what I want to know, though, we were right behind the registers between you and me all day. Right. And then we had all the kids there, and we were all playing the calls. I wonder if we drove them nuts. Well, we were pretty close to the, the and, and people standing in line and, and listening to us and the, the, the cash registers, people. and Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. I would think so. I, I'm, I'm hoping we did. That's right. That's, I like to leave an impression. Right, exactly. Whether good or bad. You know, so <laughs> you, you, when you basically you walked into Cabela's, you got the free food, mm-hmm. and then you headed over to the turkey stuff. Mm-hmm. It always worked out good that way. It does. Yeah, it was you a know? good time. That was the 1 o'clock seminar, and then at 2 o'clock, we held a one A to Z beginning turkey hunting, which yeah. was uh, which was full again. Yep. Uh, we had adults and teenagers. Yep. So... Mm-hmm. so it was a really good, uh, we asked them what they wanted to know so mm-hmm. we could tailor what we were talking about um, if we had to go, you know, depending on where we had to start. Yeah. And so we, we covered it for them. But, you know, in the middle of all that, when we were teaching that, that last seminar, the Turkey 101, I'm sitting there and there's there's two two guys in front of us, you know, and I, and I was like, man, I, I swear I know these guys from somewhere. That's right. And I was like. I just could put my finger on it. And then, you know, and they're kind of looking at us like, I know you guys, you know. And we started talking afterwards. And lo and behold, it was Vincent and Anthony from Benefit for Kids. We'd seen them there. They'd been on hunts. They'd been on hunts. And yeah. we met them at Benefit for Kids. Yeah. And the mom and grandma, actually the mom was asking some really good questions yeah. about turkey hunting. And then after, that's when we put the connection together. Yeah. And uh, Vincent, yep. Vincent, this shout out to you. We said we'd mention your name on the show. Yeah, and Anthony as and well. And Anthony yep. as well. Yep. And so, uh, yep. So, so right there, we uh, a few people we've seen other places. Right. Came into Cabela's. And I got a picture on my phone. I haven't put it up on Facebook yet. So we'd show the picture, but I just I couldn't put everything together <laughs> right. fast enough. So didn't have enough time. But uh, yeah, big shout out to them. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, thanks for coming down and watching and, and hanging out for us for the turkey seminar. Uh, thanks to everybody that came out at Cabela's uh, the last two days because uh, it was busy, which made it go really well. Yeah. you know The day was over, and I was like, wait a minute, I thought we just started. It, truthfully, that was yeah. yesterday. That's how it really felt. We we walked in the door just before 10, and we didn't mm-hmm. stop till 5 o'clock. Right. You know, it was, we barely got to eat. Right, yeah. And so, but uh, with some great questions. Um, they They got some great deals going on right now, so if you need some turkey stuff. Check out Cabela's. They got a really good deal going on. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we're you know roughly 14 in here. Let's go ahead and take our first break. When we come back. We can talk maybe a little more about today. We got a test that we're going to run here. Yep. And we got some other things we want to talk about that's uh, in in the outdoors. So to, as in, we say in the here. outdoor news. Yes, as we say. So there we're we going to go. step outside. And we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. 
Whether replenishing your soul with their all-natural organics fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Second segment of the Up North Journal, and it's still daylight out. It's man. still daylight. You had to readjust the lights, like we talked about in yeah. the first segment. But it was it. It'll probably take a couple of days. But do you, it, it do was you just, realize it's going to be like this from till now till September? It's going to be daylight when we do this. Do the show October, right? Yeah, last September, November, right? October. Right? I don't remember exactly when. I that, think it's first weekend. Well, the wait. time change, yes, but but as, as oh, daylight starts to slip, yes. and it gets dark at this time. Yeah, and um, just driving over, I had to wear sunglasses, and it was. It was really cool. I really, man, I'm I'm glad it's back. Absolutely. You know, it gives me some more time to to be out in the get some vitamin D. <laughs> the sun, right? Not come home and wait to become a mushroom, right? Right. So give me some yard time, but we got to wait for the weather to. Spring is here, man. Uh well, that's why we're talking turkey, right? You know, coming back from your house, uh, when I left your place, coming home tonight, saw three deer hanging out down here in the field. Oh, did you? Yeah. I was looking that field when I when I drive. Uh, Past the opening down there. Yeah. And it's, have you seen any turkeys lately? No. Strangely enough, okay, neighbor around the corner here, I mean, you go down a quarter mile, and then you go down, oh, probably a quarter to a half mile down the dirt road here. Okay. Kitty corner to us, you know. Yep. That lady, she works at the high school. She works in the attendance office, and Madeline sometimes doesn't make it to school on time, so we have to make a phone call down there, and we get to talk, and we get to catch up on things. <laughs> You know, back and forth. Hey, what's going on? Right. Well, lately she's been seeing coyotes, oh. seeing and hearing in her backyard quite often, more than just two or three. Really? And the other night, Mackenzie was leaving with Ben Bucksnort, a.k.a. Bucksnort, heading home. And they stepped outside, and she called me real quick and said, hey, did you hear the coyotes? I'm like, no. She goes, well, we went outside to get in the car, and we could hear coyotes out back. Really? So, yeah, we got a lot of coyotes around. They were quiet for a yeah, while. Yeah, not seeing, yeah, not, yeah, for quite a while, quite a few years, we hadn't really seen or heard anything. Now, all of a sudden, you know, here since Christmas, probably, they're kind of back in the area. Um, not seeing deer behind my house as much. I've seen some this week, but not very many. You know, it's been a while. Haven't seen turkeys yet. Not seen the first bird cruise through the back And you usually get one or two that'll come up right to the fence. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've had, actually, I, we had one that flew in the yard and took them a few to get out. I almost turned the dog loose. Right. <laughs> like, let me help you out of the yard. Yep, but, uh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. So what will probably happen is now that they're in the area, and I usually see this every couple years, mm-hmm. is I'll see that one will get hit on mm-hmm. the highway when mm-hmm. I head home. So I'll keep my eye out and see if that's going to happen. Well, if you can, run them over. <laughs> right? It's kind of the way I feel about them. <laughs> so... Hey, Denny Steiner's watching us. Hey, Denny, what's going on? Long time no see. Last time we talked to him was at ATA. Yeah, and he didn't make it for this year, but now he's... Yeah. Last time I saw him for his birthday, he was cleaning his mounts. Nothing better than that. Right, and he's got a few to clean. Two or three, yeah. yeah just a couple, right? <laughs> right on. Two, three, ten, twenty. Right on. But, uh, yeah, um, you know, also while we were at Cabela's, um, we talked about a couple weeks ago, I got my barrels... Um, my barrel that I got the gift certificate. Yeah, you got the magnet porting done. I got a magnet port done. Right. And one thing Lincoln Road did say was, uh, it's they're going to get loud. Mm-hmm. And I agree with that because I have another gun that's magnet ported, a pistol. Right. And uh, so I was kind of, I was kind of looking for some. Uh, I'm thinking about trying to use the electronic muffs. Yeah, you've been talking to a good friend of ours. Right. I was talking to Bob Rich. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The Squirrel Hunters Group. Yep. Right. And uh, I kind of asked him what he uses, mm-hmm. and I can't remember the name that he uses off the top of my head. Pro Ears. Pro Ears, thank you. And um, I was just like, I think I want to try those. Okay. So we've kind of been doing mm-hmm. a little homework uh, today. We were over yeah. there looking, looking at the whole row of them. Right. Uh, yeah, it's just not a simple decision. Right. Uh, microphones and decibels and... Yeah, basically what Danny's talking about is they're, they're muffs that you put over your ears, like when you go to the shooting range. Except these are electronic, and it'd be like you and me sitting here talking right now. You can hear everything. You can actually turn them up, and it amplifies the no- the the I want to say noise, but the background. Uh, right. 
ambient noise around you. So if you're out in the woods and you're hunting, you hear deer walking, turkey scratching, squirrels, whatever. But when you go to take a shot with like a rifle or a shotgun, as soon as it hears that spike in the audio, it, we call them noise gates. It clamps down and shuts down, and that, then it becomes just the muff. Right. And I think that is so cool. It is. I, I was just like uh, talking with the outfitter there who was uh, helping us, and mm-hmm. he was explaining them. Uh, I think they were walkers. Yeah, those he, were. Yep. And he was explaining because um, they had a, a brand called the Quad and a regular one, and there was a $20 difference, and they looked the same. So we asked, right. what's this mean? Well, it, it had to do with uh, the microphones that picked up on mm-hmm. your ears. Um the quads have four, so two in the front of the muff mm-hmm. and two in the back on each side. So you can hear front and back. Ah, that just seems so cool to me. Right. <laughs> and he said he actually, they're so good that he actually had to take them off when he was deer hunting because it, the noise was so, you know, with the deer coming in, he it, he just got confused. Okay. So I was like, hmm. I might have to try these. So I want to do a little bit more homework and uh, maybe get a pair before we head to the range for turkey season. Right. And uh, I'd like to try them out. Mm -hmm. Because normally I just use uh, regular, uh, either the foam earplugs or I got got muffs too. Right, right. But those are just... So you're at the range, you're sitting on the range at the bench and be talking back and forth and then go shoot. You don't have to worry. You can hear each other and then you got hearing protection when you shoot. Yeah. So, and those, I tell you what, those range anywhere from... Uh, probably thirty bucks to I think we saw a one that was three hundred or two fifty per ear per ear because they were inserts yes. like a hearing aid. Yeah, so that can whew, that can get expensive right. really right. quick. So if you have to buy two, that's five hundred bucks. Right, I'm not going there. I'll tell you that much. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so kind of being the safety thing, um, you know, the hearing protection and and trying to just uh, be careful with the hearing, especially with the guns and and the magnet porting that's going to be in a blind. Right. I don't know if I'll be able to get that portion of the barrel out the window. It, it, when you go to shoot, you're you're pretty excited, anyways. Right. Right. You know, and you just it, I've shot through my blind because you my, shot through your blind. Oh yeah. You shot a hole in your blind. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I haven't heard this story. Oh yeah, do it. Do tell. <laughs> well, it was. Uh, oh, man, it was a few years back. It was an opening morning. Oh no. Um, <laughs> it was right at daybreak. Okay. There was a deer down at the at the bait. Okay. And I put my scope up, and it was a six point. Okay. And that's perfectly legal, right? Because I got a combo tag, right? And I shot. And I, and I got it. It went down, you know, took off. I saw it take off, tail down. I went over there, found blood, and it didn't go far. Okay. So I come back to my blind, and, I, and I'm, I think I was gathering my stuff, and I was sitting down, and I'm looking at my, because it has, like, the, the V window. Okay. And I'm looking, I'm going. This is a pop-up blind. Yeah, it's a okay. pop-up blind. Okay. And I'm like, wow, that's interesting. So I kind of start looking further, and I'm like, oh, I think I shot through my blind. Well, I had my... My when I looked through my scope, it was above the V. I was a yeah, I was fine. Right, but I was sitting back in my chair, and when my barrel was below the V, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's kind of like a flamethrower because the little plastic netting and kind of melted. It. Okay, yeah, nice. So that's so right there. That was a good one because I remember my ears ringing when mm-hmm. I shot that one. Right, because uh, first of all, the muzzle was inside the the blind, but. That's a perfect example of I'm thinking why I need these earmuffs. Right, and I've seen other people use these too. Plus, if it's it's a microphone where you can kind of turn them up. Yep, and hear, th- hear things walking, right? Sure. You know, or and I'm thinking the four microphones. I don't know. I just got to do a little bit more ho- homework, you know, because really, truthfully, if you're looking straight out in front of you, do you really need a microphone? Right. So you could have the other ones and just turn them backwards. I right. think because I don't know. I think. They're any direction microphones. They just there's no front or rear to them. Oh, omnidirectional. Yeah, yeah I don't think there's a front side and yeah. a rear side. Yeah, basically it's, it's there. They hear all the way around. It's not like a a, a directional mic. Right, exactly. Yeah. So um, that's what I'm hoping, and uh, I'm just uh, it'll be fun. I'm, I I don't know which ones to get yet, but I think I do because I like we looked at there was there was a bunch of groups, a bunch of people yeah. that have these, yeah. and from uh, teen decibel to 20 30 decibel yeah. to and then when you get up into the 2 300 dollar range of the individual ones those are 40 and 50 decibel reduction right yeah. exactly but i don't think i'm going to be spending yeah. 500 bucks on that how how important is your hearing though it's a lot do you have hearing problems now you know i really don't 
per se, but I think I ha- I can tell that one ear is a little different than the other ear. No ringing in the ears? Oh, no, no, no I, ringing. I've got constant Yeah, you've ringing. got, we've talked yeah. about that, I think last year or the year before that, you've got that constant ringing in your ear. Yeah, you know, and, and for me to sit like out on a, if I was in the woods, you know, with a muff style just to protect my hearing, that would drive me nuts, number one, because you couldn't hear, you couldn't hear game come up. Uh, but just the solitude, quiet, and hearing the ringing, that would, it, it would, Sometimes I have problems going to sleep at night, the ringing. Because of the ringing. Yeah, just because yep. you get real quiet and you're ready to just fall asleep, and all of a sudden it becomes conscious that you're hearing that, and it's just like, oh, stop. Like right now I can hear it. Yeah, exactly. You know, most of the time I don't. So why not think safety, get a little yeah. get a little extra? Well, I'm, I'm looking at them from the standpoint that right now, the on-the-trail segment that we've been posting on yes. our page, that's been that's a project that I work on at work. And it's an outdoor segment that we run on the TV station for our local gun range. And depending on what we're doing, most of the time I'm outside. You know, we're we, we talking, you know, hunting. We talk a little fishing. We talk snowmobiles, whatever the season is and whatever's going on. Uh, but since I've started this, I've been on the gun range. This week I was on the gun range again. It is an indoor range, enclosed. For, you know, we went into the what I call the small one. There's, there's two sections. There's one where I think they have 10 lines. Okay. 10 or 12, I can't remember. And then there's a doorway that you can shut, and you go into a, a four-bay or a four-lane shooting range. Okay. You know, and it's a little more semi-private, and that's where we shoot. Well, just think about the room getting smaller. Right, even. and depending on what gun you're shooting, yeah. right? So I'm always having to borrow uh, hearing protection from them when I go shoot there shoot video for them you know right so i thought well you know i just i've got i've got some here at the house and i i told the owner tom uh this week i said he said you don't just give you a pair i go no i got plenty of them at home but uh you know i'll just i'll bring them in and just leave them at work well i thought why not use something like this when you started talking about this i thought yeah this is something i need to check into as well because then i can be on the range talking and i can hear we can communicate back and forth when he shoots it's taken care of right and you know and if these work as you know they say we could probably wear them right now, yeah, and have a conversation. And it'd be, but if we were just to turn around and shoot, yeah, we'd be all set. So you'd shoot my well monitor. I didn't here. say I'd shoot at the monitor. <laughs> I'd shoot out the window. <laughs> but yeah, so it was kind of I don't know. I was thinking safety. You right. know, you hear about uh, tree stand safety. You hear about all the kinds of safety yeah. out there. Heard a guy fell on a tree stand this weekend. Yeah, taking somebody, one down. Yep. Yeah. So you know that right there, uh, tree stand safety again, safety. Mm-hmm. You know, when you get out even fishing, hook yeah. safety. Yeah. You know, you don't need... Life jackets. Life jacket. Uh, it's all important. It, it's it's got to take care of ourselves. Slow down. Right. Take a deep breath. Think before you just jump, you know, exactly. and do something. Exactly. So, you know, so... That's how I want to go with this. The, you know, I kind of want to go to the, on the safety route and make sure everything I can do. And those seem kind of cool to me. Just, okay. You know, just if it if it helps me out in the woods, and it does. If it, right. You know... I don't want to be here sitting in this chair when I'm 80 years old going, eh? Not right, exactly. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want that. Uh, you, you only get uh, your two years given to you when you're born, and you got to carry them with you through the whole life, so take care of them. Right, exactly. And, you know, it's it's, it's just take care of them. You know, and I, I, it would be interesting. I see people wearing them when they're mowing the lawn. Would these work for that? I don't know Are if they're adjustable as far as the type of I noise so. you're reducing, you know? I don't know. That would be you know what? That's a that's a really good one when you're doing the lawn. Yeah. I wonder at what um, noise gate you yeah, called it. Yeah. Yeah. When it kicks in, you know what the spike has to be. That's an, that interesting. Uh, yeah. That that's I was you know you just mentioned that now that I think about it. I thought most of them were had were like the radios. Right. But I bet you those are like noise canceling ones. Yeah. Because I started doing that um, two years ago, wearing earplugs, mowing and. Uh, I was using my gun mufflers mowing. Okay. Because at, at work, we have a big push for safety. Right. We have to own it. Right. And it, it just, it plays right into that um, owning your own safety. And I mm-hmm. said, well, if I have to do it at work, why don't I just do it at home? Right. Because yep. it's like, oh, you know, because I go home, start up the lawnmower, do it. I was like, wait a second. Right. So I started grabbing some extra work earplugs and plugging in. And um, yeah, it I started about two years ago thinking about that because of work. Okay. I, so I just carried my work to home. Right on. Thinking safety. And it's just uh, goes along with when you're running a chainsaw. When you're, mm-hmm. you know, don't use a chainsaw and don't use uh, slippers, right? Right. Well, we're going to be back down to Cabela's in two weeks. So when we go back, uh, hopefully we'll have a little more research done. Yep. We can maybe ask a few more questions and, you know, update you on, you know, what kind of what we're thinking on this. So Exactly. So yeah. uh, stay tuned on that one because... Uh, 
definitely in August, we're going to be talking uh, tree stand safety. So, Yep, absolutely. So I tell you what, uh, we're a little long here in this segment. Where we're going to step outside. We're going to take our next break. Because in the next section, next segment. segment, we got a test coming. All right. I hope I pass. We're going to step outside, I'll be, or we'll be right back after this. PSC Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organics fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back, everybody. Third segment of the show, and Danny told me we're going to be taking a test. I didn't study. Well, I hope you uh, can pass. Because, you know, we like to learn things new. Yep. And this year, we uh, brought on Lim Walker Game Calls, Mm -hmm. proud sponsor of the Up North Journal, Yep. using game calls and pegs. Yep. Uh, And we have uh, his turkey sling. I forgot something. I have to move something, so hang on real quick. You you carry on. I'll, I'll go on because I'll I'll give him a, a plug. All right. But we've got Tom's Tim's turkey sling right here. We'll be using these hopefully in about a month, a little over a month. But uh, carry our turkeys out of the woods. Fluorescent orange. Uh, be safe. Over here. As Mike knocks things over. Uh, so if you're interested in getting a call uh, from Lim Walkers, get on Facebook. Go check them out. Um, and find out uh, he's got prices there. He's got from an aluminum one to glass to slate to a plastic double-sided uh, right here. Uh, and all the prices are on Facebook. Get a hold of him. It's almost that time here in Michigan, so get him to send you a, a call. All right, where are you going to do this at, Dan? Well, you're going to do it right right here. Okay, I tell you what. I'm going to sit over here, and I'm going to run the camera. So everybody that's on the podcast, you're going to have to tune in on the live stream to see this, all right? Before that, we got a question. My brother is asking, what is the best gun for coyotes? Mm, depends on where you're hunting and what you're able to use right. legally. Correct. Day, night hunting. I tell you what, we'll carry that on maybe in the next segment. There you go. So stay tuned. All right, so something we learned from Tim this year was uh, we here in Michigan, well, really kind of everybody, but us Michigan hunters know how Michigan weather works. One day, turkey hunting, it's 60 degrees, blue sky, and beautiful. Next day, it's 35 and snowing, or 40 in monsoons. So what happens is uh, in the mornings tend to be foggy, or you might get morning dew. And what happens is if you're running a slate call right here, as I'm trying to get these ready, um, you know, you're... you're stuff around. I know, I'm, I'm trying. You got it? Not yet. All right. I'm getting it. So right here, got a slate call. You know, runs a slate call. Everything's good. But what happens, and I'm using, uh, I think this is hickory. Um, Tim can confirm that, that it's a hickory stick. Um, here you go. Plays nicely. But what happens when you're sitting under a pine tree and uh, some water gets on it? I don't know. Well, let's find out. I'm going to probably get something wet, and I better get, not get my phone wet, right? So let's do this. Let's get this nice and wet. So what happens when your call gets all wet? Oh, man. Usually with slate, this is what happens. My wet, as you can see that, right there. There, there you go. Yep. Hold it down. There you go. Right. See that? It's now from a nice chalky color to a dark where that's wet. And if you try to run, see that? Sounding really cruddy. But if you use ooh, an, acrylic. an acrylic peg, 
Watch what happens. Now, I explained to everybody that, that the end on that now cut, we haven't shaped it yeah, yet. Yeah, we we're, we're going to work on the end of this acrylic. But if you take an acrylic peg and go, oh, and it's still wet, you can see how dark that is. And if I get the, it's pretty, there you go. See that shine? Ooh, that's kind of, there. oh, but it's, it's, it's wet. Well, you know what? Let me get it more wet just to prove a point. There you go. So let's run it. Basically, this acrylic will play the slate when drenched. Pretty cool. Found that out with Tim. See, it, it, it's trying to play it. Not sounding good. But if I go here. It plays. Pretty cool when you're talking waterproof. It is, you know, and... And, and it's funny, and, and so kind of explain, Tim Tim told us that a couple weeks back. Yeah. And, and we're like, okay, we got we got to test it. Well, we were called out mm -hmm. at Cabela's and said, well, let's test it right now. And I think he right. said, okay, we got a bottle of water here. Yep. And we did that. And I tell you what, the response we got when people saw that... We're blown away. We're blown away. Yep. Blew us away. Yep. So, but there you go. Let me see that. There you go. But yeah, it... Uh... And it is still wet, so you can see the shine there as I move it back and forth. And this is a hickory stick. Yep. But excuse me, man. But good one. It's just it's uh, Tim's acrylic peg here, and he he sent it to us so we could actually shape it the way we'd like. So yep, he sends them out flat like that, so you can work on them because everybody's different. Yeah. Typically, uh, you get the the balled off, mm -hmm. and it usually does well. So mm -hmm. we're gonna we got to work the acrylic ones. Right. But we just wanted to run this test because. What happens in Michigan, and it's happened to me, I was sitting under a tree. Absolutely. And all of a sudden I looked down and, and my, my slate's got spots on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. Yep. But now that I know I can run an acrylic over it, um, I'm good to go. Limb Walker game calls. There you go. Right here. So so if you if you need some pegs, an acrylic peg would be a great one to add to your collection. Absolutely. So get, get a hold of Tim at Limb Walker Game Calls on Facebook. Uh, get yourself some acrylic pegs. Absolutely. Another uh, another one, Tim. Just FYI, I know you're uh, having us play with this one this year. Um, is the uh, aluminum? I can tell you what. I'm not gonna play anymore because that's loud. You should have uh, heard that in the store. Yeah, big hit, big hit. So that was a big hit. They uh, they really keyed in on that one. Um, uh, a lot of people uh, we showed them the the double sided. Mm -hmm. They really liked that because basically they were getting the two calls mm -hmm. in one. Yep, a they liked that. Building. And then when we showed them how to use the acrylic on it, that really was a was a big one. Yep. Uh, and the aluminum was definitely a you could hear it echoing in the in the store. It was yep. kind of cool. Like I said, we left a lot of people probably ticked off at us by the time we left today. Right. It's like we, two days of this between our mouth calls and and yeah. the pot calls, and we were using box calls. Yeah. Because people would ask us. Um, oh, or would want to be shown how to use a, a box call or a mm -hmm. pod call or a mouth call. Uh, like we said, there was a lot of new people that were interested in learning. So right on. Cool. But uh, we did it a test right there in Cabela's mm -hmm. to prove that out. Yep. Yep. We got called out and said, prove it. Okay, here you go. Stand back. And you are totally correct, Tim. See, he says we need our ear protection for the aluminum ones. Yes, you do. That would be a good test. The, and I, <laughs> I wonder if we could do it and get it high enough that it would actually cut it off. Yeah, I don't know. So, but, uh, nope, it was really cool. So we learned this year what acrylic does for calls. Right. Hey, hand me that glass of water. I'm thirsty. Let me finish that off. You're going to spill it. Yeah, I probably would. Mm. I tell you what, let's go ahead and let's take our last break. And we come back, we'll kind of save everything here for the end of the show. Cause I got to, I got to move the other camera back anyway. All right, let's do that. All right. We're going to step outside. We're going to take our last break. We come back. We got a couple little things we want to run by you and wrap up the show. We'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a vapor shooter? Find out at pscarchery.com. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. 
Whether replenishing your soul with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back to the last segment of the show. For those of you on the podcast, you just missed a little tip or a trick that you need to watch the live stream for. Yep. <laughs> it, was, it was about the acrylic. Yep, about the acrylic call we yep. just talked about. And so. uh, we got to go back to our Facebook live segment, uh, check it out, and uh, check it out. So uh, just before we went into that segment, we were talking about hearing coyotes. And, mm-hmm. and my brother uh, had, a, a, had a question. What would be a good, best gun for a coyote? cannon <laughs> well yeah some uh um, depends some on orders oh, yeah. it depends on where you're hunting it depends if it's daytime nighttime there are certain rules and regulations you got to follow uh public land private land all that kind of good stuff nighttime hunting state of michigan if memory serves me correctly because the laws could have changed this year but rimfire only at night which is an hmr 17 or a 17 mach 2 you know that's, that's your 17 caliber which is a rimfire or a 22 mag yep which is a rim fire um 22 yeah you could use but i'd go with the mag why not i'd go yeah i'd yeah. go with the mag at that point yep. a, a coyote is a a decent sized animal absolutely now yeah, it's not a rabbit so other than that at night you can use a shotgun okay so that would you be you can a, use a shotgun yes. uh the um the remington turkey slash predator gun that i got with buckshot <laughs> you, you would use i would use i would use a uh, uh i just use a shotgun that, that could shoot buckshot right that would probably be my go-to if i was going to use a shotgun um now if you're talking rifle i personally got i have an ar-15 uh shoots 556 five, with uh with a higher powered scope on it okay shooting long distance um you could go 243 Actually, in the state of Michigan, in the lower zone, as long as it's not deer season, you can use 30 at six, and I've confirmed that with the DNR. Just 30 at six? No, no. I mean high powered rifle. Oh, high powered rifle. Thirty okay. thirty. You know, three hundred eight. Three hundred eight. Yeah, I, I think it's a little overkill. Um, you know, it, the coyote here in the corner, I killed with a twenty two mag. It uh, pretty good clip, but but, a, a, but, a, but well, a, well over hundred. I guess with a high power, you're you're. I think what they're thinking is in farm fields yeah reach out and touch yeah. uh yeah at a distance i've got a 22 hornet that i wouldn't be afraid to use that's a center fire 22 caliber okay um i load them hot i i do reload and i i load those hot probably use a like a hornety poly tip i think i load 40 grain maybe 45s i can't remember but uh yeah they do wonders on on groundhogs <laughs> so basically the best thing to do is is figure out what type of hunting you're going to do yes where you're going to do it yes and then decide what to use yeah i mean are you hunting over a field are you hunt, are you shooting off your back porch because you've got them running you know uh 50 yards at the back edge of a wood line and you're worried about them getting your pets you know they're... what would you use let, 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 let's mm-hmm. just throw the hypothetical out we're standing on your back porch uh-huh. and we can see how far is it to that 330 back? yards thank you very much <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. I know. I won't. But, I have arranged it. But what would you use, let's say we're we're going to sit on your porch and we're going to shoot at a coyote that's out there. Out there that far? Yeah, something what, like that. What would I use? Wow. That's a good question. Um, Maybe my AR. Okay. If I had it dialed in. Well, I'm, I'm assuming, let's say you did all your, your, all your guns are sighted in for mm-hmm. the best distance. Yeah. I mean, out of what I have, what I have personally, I would use that, or I might use my twenty-two Hornet because okay. I do load that hot. Okay. Um, I mean, those things can scream. I, I, I've not sighted those rifles in for. I've, they're basically sighted in at hundred yards, and I don't know what the drop is. I've shot them both at two hundred yards. Okay. Um, you get a lot of drift. Uh, not so much drift if the wind's not blowing real bad, but I do get quite a bit of drop. So, what's the furthest you've ever shot one of your guns? Two hundred yards. Yeah. I don't have a range around here that I can shoot much further. I can't shoot any further than that. My friend mm-hmm. Andrew's got that. Uh, yeah. They go up and shoot that 500, 1,000. Right. Up. Yeah. That's a private course, and you actually. No, that, that's not. Well, it's not. A, it's not. A, it's on public land. 
But you've got to be verified to shoot that range. No, no, that's, it's not a range. It's They got it off on state land. Oh, okay. They created okay. their own range. Okay, I know there's a range up that way. Yes, across, uh, which would be the west side, west of, the side of the state. Yes, yeah. there is that range, too. I know up in Alpena, uh, the Alpena Sportsman's Club has a 600-yard range. There's not many ranges that you can go <laughs> And I range. stood at the shooting line, and I looked down, and I went, Where's the target? <laughs> right? I mean, that's a long poke. And in matter of fact, you, I was flipping through, and I was on the outdoor channel. And they, I think Tuesday night? Mm-hmm. One of the nights, it's like their shooting night. Right. And that's what they were doing. They were, uh, some instructor was having them shoot at, I think it was up to 1,000 yards. Okay. And they did a, just like, I guess it would be like almost like a normal and it was like a normal view from this, and you're like looking at the screen, going, mm-hmm. "Where's that target?" Right, right. That's a long poke, man. You know? You're not, you're not kidding. So, but so there you go. You just gotta do a little bit of homework, find out what, where, yeah, when, where, and and then decide what you're gonna use. Right. But you could use a, a two forty three, a, a two forty three, yeah, or you could use a twelve gauge with buckshot, yeah, depending on if you're gonna be close, you get them in close enough, then. right. You know, you go with the buckshot. Daytime, right? nighttime, you know, there, there's a lot of things that play into it. You know, some of it's just personal preference on what you're used to shooting, too. You know, if you what you're comfortable with. If you get them close enough, you can use the bow. Yeah, right on. So, there you go, Terry. So, so I hope that answers the question. It's, it actually gives you more questions. But it yeah, you, it does. It gives you more <laughs> thought. It gives you reason to go buy a few more rifles and start playing around with stuff. Well, it, so. and, it, and it, gives you, it gives you more thinking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because uh, depending on whether you're going to be on a farm field, you're going to be up north, yeah. uh, in the woods. Yeah. So. Well, at our camp, it's uh, if, if you're out deer hunting, uh, it's shoot on sight. No, oh, absolutely. SOS. Shoot on sight. It doesn't matter deer rifle, what whatever you've got. If I had one in front of me with my bow, I'd shoot it. If I was turkey hunting and it got close enough, I'd, I'd, I'd fill them full of number fives. You know, I might not. I, it depends on where you hit them at, I guess. You know how close they are. You know, and then that's the other part of it is is, is how close they're going to be and yeah. when you shoot them, right? Right. But uh, the only problem I have them shooting during deer season is it's like, man, if I shoot this, am I going to screw up my hunt? I've shot at one during deer season. I know. I, 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 I had one. Shot at one. I had one opening morning. Mm-hmm. Come in and I'm like, eh. yeah. I let him go. I was like, I can't do it. Right. It was like ten o'clock. It was like, I was like, oh. and I let him go. Okay, have you ever shot a deer in the afternoon or in the evening? Yep. Okay. Well, other fire, other people are shooting around the area. I know. You know, that's the kind of the way I look at it. Exactly. So I, yeah. So it's just, it was just me on that day. I've uh, maybe next time yeah. it might be different if I see him and yeah, it, it, maybe I'll just I'll just nail him and be done with it and just let him lay there for a while. I get them out of there I w- because the smell, the deer. That's that is the one issue that I would be concerned about is the smell, the the scent oh, the, off of the, oh off the predator, off the predator. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The deer would become alarmed at that as well, you know, and, and stay away from your area. So yeah, I would if I shot it, I'd get rid of it. And now I'm gonna get it mounted. Yeah, and take it take it over to somebody that you don't like and throw it in their field. You're right. Right. <laughs> no, I'm not suggesting that. Now I take that back. No, no, <laughs> not that you would do that. No, no, no. So. so. All right, we've got uh, oh four or five minutes left. Um, yeah, other than that, it's been a, a whirlwind weekend. It, it's been a whirlwind week as well. Um, we're going to touch on a subject that we're not going to go into a whole lot of detail on, but uh, we feel like we need to to cover this because uh, yeah, it, it, it's one of those subjects that uh, we're not a part of, but it right. affects what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, this week there there was some information that come out uh, publicly. Uh, involving some people that are in the hunting world right. and i don't know how widely this is really known so we're not gonna we're not mentioning names or anything but basically um it's just doing things the right way and doing things the wrong way there's ways of doing things and and making sure that, that you know we did an interview at ata with bill Epperts, uh psc <laughs> elite staff you talk about yeah. some great he you know he's wisdom it. he's you know talking about people getting into the industry Keep your nose clean. And he's an ex-cop. He is. So he, when he says that, he's saying it for two pur- purposes. In life. In life, keep your nose clean. And, and in business. In, in business, keep your nose clean. Absolutely. Uh, it came to light that uh, some things have been going on in the industry with a, a certain individual that uh, it's not good. No, it's not. Not good at all. And uh, it, I guess, uh, as we've talked, uh, it's more of a, I don't know if we're sad. It's just... Shocked. Shocked, sad, but... It's, disappointed yeah very disappointed but when we do things uh in the outdoors mm-hmm. you know uh, we've heard from time and time again others um shooting 
oh, one too many bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, shooting and not having the right tag. Yeah. Uh, shooting in one state, moving to another state. Mm-hmm. You know, just different things that every time something happens like this, it's a black eye. Sure. And and these the so-called professionals mm-hmm. that get caught doing this gives everybody a bad it name. It gives everybody a bad name. Absolutely. And so uh, Mike and I, we've always tried to, to make sure of our, our regulations, mm-hmm. uh, making sure we're doing everything on the up and up. Yep. Uh, whether we're doing business dealings, uh, it, it's just when something like this happens, and this is not a small, small thing. No, it's this not. Could, this could go big. It, could, it has the it, potential to be real big. And really bad for this person. Yep. And, you know, and this person's got a family. Yep. You know, so it's not only going to affect this person, but the family. Yep, yep. And friends. And, and friends. You know, friends as well. Right. So it, we just wanted to talk about this tonight because it's just one of those things that it... it is it close to home? Yeah. Yeah. It's been weighing really heavy. It is. We've been talking about the last... Four days. Four days. <laughs> yep. Um, and um, it's just getting out there, doing like we did at Cabela's. Mm-hmm. You know, by no means are we professionals. No. But we're going to try to give the best information we can to our knowledge. Yep. Things that have worked. Uh, we're not going to blow sunshine up your butt saying, hey, if you do this and right. this. And, you know, uh the pro means pro promotional, right? You know, pro, you know, I hate the word uh, pro staff. I I don't like that term, and that's I mean we're not even going there. But the point is, is we're trying to promote the sport in the best possible light that we can, and, and, and getting new people into the outdoors, like the kids this weekend with the calls. You know, that was a breath of fresh air. That that kind of took that heaviness off this last four days. Oh, it, you know, it, watching it, it was fun watching them try to run the call, and then mm. when they got the little bit of sound, yep, you they see got them light up. Yeah, so. Now, now you take it years down the road, and, and this person in the outdoor industry did what they have been accused of doing. Yeah. Um, so it, it just, it just kind of we needed to reflect on it uh, for each other because you know uh, they'll get you to the point of when you tag the animal. Yeah, yeah. We talked about it in our seminars this weekend. You know, taking pictures. You know, you take your selfie with your, with your game. You know, and there may not be any malintent. You just, man, you're proud, and you go up, and you got say it's turkey, and you're holding the bird, and you kind of take a selfie. Well, if you hadn't tagged the animal yet, you can't touch the animal until you tag. You got to tag it first, then take the picture. Exactly. You know, and, that, and but, that's the true rule: is you're not yeah. supposed to move the game yep. until they're they're tagged. And the, it, it really, it's a really gray area. Yep. If they they can be really really anal anal about it, right? <laughs> yeah, Good word, right, right, right. Um, and say, okay, you you picked up the head, mm-hmm. but you put it right back down, and then you tagged it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or they could say, well, you took the picture at this time. Yeah. And there's no tag. There's on no it. tag. Yeah. It's like okay. Or another one is, boy, according to Facebook, you posted this picture of this buck that you shot was at on. At ten o'clock in the morning, you bought a tag. But our records at indicated noon. at at one thirty in the afternoon. Yeah. you were buying a tag. Yeah, yeah. Could you like enlighten us on the story? Yeah. Okay. So th- that just goes to show you a little bit of of um, what plays in our minds when stories like this come out. Yeah. You know, and this and this has to and then okay. So that instance, we're just talking about you and the animal. Well, this instance is is one person is dealing. With a bunch of other people, people, yep, a lot of people involved. You know? So and so, it's it has nothing to do with an animal. It's 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 person to person communication, and it sucks. Yeah, yep. And you know, we we know there'll be other things that come out about this, and we'll talk more in depth about it when that happens. Right now, because there's stuff's just got to play out. So basically, what we're saying is treat people with respect. Don't lie. Don't try to cheat the system. Don't. Don't poach. You know, do things the right way. And There's a reason why you need to go out and get a license. Yeah. There's a reason uh, you have to do things in certain ways. Yeah. You know, it just... Uh, you know, it, we're working on well, on the video. Actually, we haven't even mentioned this part yet. But oh, yeah, we're working we haven't on gotten the, there yet. We, we're working on the video that we did while we were up at the Deer Health Check with Dr. James Kroll. You know, and he talks about management and giving back um whether you're it's private land or public land and and giving back to the resource managing the resource doing things the right way and that's all we that's that's all we want man it's a resource we want to be able to pass this on to our kids and and have them enjoy it doing it the right way learning Mm -hmm. and teaching 
Right. And passing it on. Yep. And it, and that passing on can be young and old. Yep. Because you're never too old to, to try something new. Absolutely. And you're never too young to try it for the first time. All right. So that's all I want to say about that. Yeah, Other than uh, that. Until further notice. Yeah. Pay attention this week. We're going to try to release the video that we did at the Deer Necropsy. We talked about making this as a podcast audio interview. But we figured it's not. It doesn't work. It doesn't work because when he's talking, he's actually doing his work. He's showing. And he actually shows you stuff. So you wouldn't be able to get the, the visual in your head when he talks about it. But if you put the two together, it, it yeah, it, it's good. It's good. And it's a half hour. <laughs> and it's a half hour. So, so stay tuned. Hopefully uh, later in the week we'll, uh, we'll release that. Yep. And then uh, try to get some feedback on it. All right. So for the podcast portion of the show, we're going to wrap it up now. And uh, we'll be back again next week. Uh, who knows what we got going on? I don't know yet. This Right now, we're kind of topsy-turvy, depending if it's hot or cold out, you know, how the weather plays. So I want to get out and shoot my bows. I got some arrows I got to fletch. So there's a lot of stuff, you know, that I can be doing. And uh, hopefully we'll be reporting back on it next week. So that'll do us here for us at the Up North Journal on the podcast portion. So as we always say, if you're out in the water or in the woods. Shoot straight and be safe until next week. And don't forget you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Carbon Express, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Scent Hunting Sense, Killer Food Plots, Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants, Cabela's, Spot Shooters, Limb Walker Turkey Calls, Antler Action, Family Tradition Tree Stands, and Twisted Mind Bow Strings. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.